Dr. Vaughn answers your medical question. So uh, while we get ready here, I'll be greeting people as they come in. Go ahead and tell us where you're from and greet us. And we'll all together learn some more about some medical topics, which will be determined by you, the viewers, the, the med heads out there who would like to learn about medical topics here with Dr. Vaughn on an evening live YouTube video that we're going to do here. Um, I'll go ahead and start reading off your your names and your greetings and probably around two minutes into the video in case you're watching this after the fact four to two minutes after if you don't want to see me greeting people like Boo Boo Kitty who says dude medhead and Claire Barney dog hi doctor Sharon Calvert hello good some very familiar names I like having familiar names I also like new people to join us too so if you're new this is your first time watching a uh, an Auburn Medical Group live video go ahead and tell us so and tell us where you're from also if uh, well, it's getting pretty late in the Midwest, but we actually did interview, well, then sort of a phone interview of somebody who, who may want to work for us who could actually be watching us from uh, the Midwest here. Cheryl McNutt, hi, doctor. Emmy Palooza, hi, doctor. Kimberly Monroe, hi. What causes POTS disease? Okay, we'll start off with POTS disease. POTS disease, is, well, actually, there's, there's POTS disease and there's POTS puffy tumor. Um... I'm actually more familiar with POTS puffy tumor than I am with POTS disease. POTS puffy tumor being where a frontal sinus infection uh, gets a little out of control and actually eats through the bone and you get the swelling up here in the uh, frontal bone of the skull. Uh, I'm not getting keeping up with all the greetings here. Boo Boo Kitty's impressed with the number of people. Angie Joe, I'm a newbie from Kentucky. Thank you, Angie Joe, for letting us know. That's cool. Teresa D, Teresa from, and then she'll probably tell us later where she's from. Trista Davis is new also, a newbie from Oregon. Also, if the comments are getting just too busy and you really need to get something read, you can use the super chat, the little dollar sign, and that will get you noticed. You may notice that I'm kind of looking at the other side of the screen from normal just because of my phone upside down. That's why I'm, I'm looking over the other direction from you guys when I'm reading the, uh, the notes here. Hawaii. Okay, well, that's why it's not too late for you. Uh, for Teresa D. Sally Ann says, hi, and Unicorn Life, I fell on my knee today. It is very swollen. What should I do? Well, since it's so late now, you're probably not going to get in and get checked by your doctor if it needs to be, which I can't tell over the internet, and I can't practice medicine over the internet, but generally we tell people to ice something overnight and see what it's like in the morning. Um, and then if it's not working, you can see your doctor. Uh, Beth came in a Fluffy Bunny 2, newbie from Texas also, Kimberly Monroe. Thank you, doctor. Unicorn Ice Pack, yep. Cheryl McNutt, is drinking carbonated mineral water bad for you? I can't think of a reason that it would be. And Sharon Calvert wants me to say something about skin tags. Skin tags being abnormal growths that occur in areas of the body, usually with a lot of movement, like in the armpit, around the neck, inside the thighs. And these are areas where, for whatever reason, the growth that normally is limited by something in the cells, some chemical process, is it working? Probably because some DNA during cell division got copied incorrectly and it seems to be a common error that occurs for some reason about how the cells split uh, with the chromosomes uh, and the way the information is coded that that's just a common mistake that happens and the growth is a little unregulated and you get skin tags. Um, they are not precancers, they just are skin tags. And sometimes we'll take them off just for cosmetic reasons, sometimes because they, they'll, they'll get twisted and, and bleed or uh, actually um, will strangulate themselves. Okay, we have some people here like Corinne Massoud from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Sorry, I mispronounced your name. Beth Kim and the Fluffy Bunny, LMAO, it's Carmen. Oh, Carmen. Yeah, it is. You're right. Um, it's bigger print when you write it that way. Unicorn Life, thank you. Boo Boo Carbonated, ew. I, I agree, I don't like carbonated uh, soda water myself. Oh, uh, as far as something that could be wrong with the minerals, sometimes they'll put quinine in the minerals and that can cause heart rhythm changes. So I, I will say with that caveat, although it certainly does help for the, uh, the cramps in the legs, which is what a lot of people use it for. Beth Carmen says, I have a lot of scars, or will they go away when I'm older? Will they still be there? Probably still be there, Carmen, sorry. Shell McNutt, I like the fizz, boo-boo. Oh, you're talking about the mineral uh, water again. Just got the radio, yay, I love live streams, good. Just got the radio, we're glad you like it. Angie Joe, our newbie from Kentucky. Sorry, I, I'm sorry, my memory. Uh, I 
just found out I have TMJ in my jaw. Do you know what I can do the more painful days? My anti inflammation meds are helping somewhat. That's when you're probably going to have to work with your dentist and possibly an oral surgeon. Not to say you have to have surgery, but oral surgeon because that's who works on it to, to help with this. They may have you use some mouth guards, may have you used some medicines. Uh, sometimes they'll work surgically on these things to help them uh, when you just can't get relief otherwise. And there's different causes for it. Sometimes it's the grinding, clenching teeth. Uh, sometimes it's just genetic problems. Sometimes there's rarely infections, and those are dealt with a completely different kind of treatment. Hello from Georgia for Walk by Faith NT. Boo Boo Kitty, Cheryl, Soda, yes, water, no. Beth Carmen, yes, I have TMJ too. TMJ. Sally Ann, doesn't drinking carbonated mineral water increase your sodium intake? Yeah, yeah. I used to drink a lot, and my doctor said my sodium was too high. Well, that'd be a reason to cut back on it. Uh, Milky Tea, please. Hi, Teresa D. Smarter, wa smart water is good. Ross Agundez, hi, doctor, from Calexico, California, where the Mexico border is. Mm, thus the name Calexico. I've been diagnosed with fibromyalgia and is very pain. Is there a cure? A medicine? Not a cure, although I will say, for a lot of the aspects of fibromyalgia, and we have actually a psychotherapist who participates in our live YouTubes who may chime in on this, there is definitely some kind of psychological connection to it, possibly the actual start of it. So it's, you know, uh, related to psychological issues where it came from. Can that help with the treatment of it once it's established? I am not real familiar with the literature on psychological treatments for fibromyalgia, but for medicines that treat it and other lifestyle changes, I am familiar. I do know that it responds very well to the anti-epileptic medicines, which control nerve impulses, uh, Lyrica or Gabapentin, and also the antidepressant Cymbalta, which works on various nerve pains. For example, it's indicated in the situation of fibromyalgia, but also diabetic peripheral neuropathy and other types of neuropathies, including uh, post-herpetic neuralgia, which is the pain that people have after shingles. So these are nerve-type pains. They also work on the fibromyalgia pain, telling you something's going on with the wiring there. Interesting thing. You hear me talk a lot about psychological-type areas and treatments along with the uh, fibromyalgia discussion. I listened to a podcast from, I believe it was Brigham and Women's Hospital in, in Boston. It's associated with Harvard University. And they're actually changing the name of their department for back pain and spine surgery. It's now a, a union of spine surgeons, neurologists, and psychologists because they're starting to look at the whole nervous system, including the psychological side of it, as a whole and not independent parts because they all have influence on each other. Okay, let me get caught up on some comments here after having my fibromyalgia talk. Boy, you guys are really prolific here. Okay, so that was for Rosa Gundes from Calexico. Goldie Webb, thanks for your videos. I discovered I got paranoia when I went to the doctor tomorrow. Is there anything I should worry about? No, worry doesn't help anything. Vicki Smith, hello from North Carolina. Angie Joe, looks like my dentist appointment is in my future. My doctor mentioned might need to see one if I'm grinding my teeth. Thank you. Claire and Barney Dog, I have to do cheap mouth guards. Barney will eat them if he finds them. The night guards help a lot. And Marlene Thunder from Red Lake, Minnesota. You're staying up late. Thank you, Marlene. Just go to the radio. Do you see arthritis in your practice a lot? Yeah, I do, actually. What do you typically do to treat it? Can the cartilage grow back? What kind of arthritis are you talking about? Uh, we see all types of arthritis, and they're all different entities. Uh, as far as cartilage growing back, no, no, we don't have any cartilage going back in our practice, although I'm sure that there's a lot of research being done on that uh, by the orthopedists, um, possibly the rheumatologists, but probably the orthopedists or them working together. Sally Ann, I have fibro and CFS2. The pain is debilitating. Boo Boo Kitty, thanks to your videos, Dr. Vaughn. I have learned how to deep fry bull dangly bits and some medical stuff, too. She's talking about, actually, that's not on the Auburn Medical Group channel, I don't think. I think that's on my personal channel where we fried the uh, Rocky Mountain oysters. 
Beth Carmen, my mom is is honestly obese. And I'm not sure what the difference between honestly obese and dishonestly obese is. I think it has more to do with them telling the truth or not rather than the obesity. And she has back problems but can't afford to go to the doctor or anything. She is a single mother and she works at retail. Is there any way she can get better? The obesity and the back problems, losing weight through, and it's hard for a lot of people uh, because I've experienced telling patients how to diet, how to eat less, how to exercise. All the exercise is not really going to be the big thing that helps them lose weight. It's just helping to keep them fit as it's occurring. Uh, decreasing the calorie, calories coming in. I, I've told people to avoid the things that seem to make it worse, which is the simple carbohydrates because of their effect on you hormonally tend to be the place where you're going to get more benefit from cutting back the simple carbohydrates. That's your, your sweets and your starches the white foods, breads, rice, pastas, uh, potatoes, chips, and then, of course, cookies and sweets and ice cream and cake. Uh, but it's still hard for a lot of people. And then I'll even have them do my fitness pal. I'm a fan of that for helping them count calories. Uh, but it can still be hard for a lot of people. And when they're not having success with those, I'll tell them, just go with a program like Weight Watchers, like Jenny Craig, where they have meetings that you go to. And oftentimes people will do great if they participate in the meetings. And people, that's just not working, then I'll tell them, you know what, just spend the money and go to a, an actual medicated weight loss program with medical supervision. And then if they're really uh, in the higher uh, BMI levels, very obese, where it's a health risk or they have the health risks of diabetes and hypertension and high cholesterol with, with heart risk, will actually recommend gastric bypass surgery. What? Gastric bypass surgery? Why is something so dangerous? Because they're way safer doing the surgery than continuing life that obese when they have start to add up these, these medical problems together. Okay, I've been falling back on the comments. Uh, I, I hope I haven't missed any super chats. If, they, if there were any, I know you guys would tell me. You guys call my attention to the super chats because you guys are good about that. Uh, thank you for doing that in the past. Okay, so looks like we just need to um, probably start with the comments at the bottom. So Sally Ann, I've been reading that marijuana relieves fibro pain. Do you prescribe it for fibro or anything else? No, I don't prescribe it. Nobody prescribes it. You can write a recommendation for it, although I don't do that. Uh, I have people go to somebody who that's what they do. They, they write recommendations for marijuana use, the card. Um, I believe they call it the green card. You know, kind of funny, but... Uh, the, you take that to the dispensary and then you get your marijuana according to a certain amount by state law. Even though it's not legal at the federal level, so you are still all at risk for breaking federal laws, but the DA has chosen to turn and look the other way if you're doing it consistent with your state's laws. So many people are getting relief for it, for fibromyalgia and other things. I do not personally know of any data specifically about fibromyalgia pain and cannabis. But I don't discourage people from trying it if nothing else is helping um, except maybe opiates and I, I don't recommend using opiates for chronic pain so the, uh, the cannabis would be something I would be much more comfortable with a patient using than opioids for, for chronic pain. But I still would want uh, when people are dealing with chronic pain to have a psychologist involved. That's something that we're trying to get better at at our office to get them in the, in the loop early because chronic pain across the board seems to have ties to psychological issues, even if it's just dealing with the pain. And oftentimes, oh, look, Dr. Gwen just came. Dr. Gwen, good evening. Thank you for coming. Oh, and Boo Boo Kitty knows that you're here. After Prop 215 in California, it's called a 215 card. Well, thank you, Dr. Gwen, for telling us the number of the card. I appreciate that. And then I'm looking back just to see if there's a new person, specific new person that uh, I thought might be joining us this evening. Can you dab for me? I'm Daddy Dab. Dad or Dab. Okay, Teresa. Saw a GP in Indo today. My diet is wreaking havoc on my T1D. Zara Lobo of swimmer's ear and boo boo kitty dr Gwen is good with drug info yes he is that's why we have him here as a reference much more than that too uh katie kennedy says hello doctor what is the best thing that i can get 
over the counter for lower back pain. I would say the best thing, and this is something I recommend for more than just lower back pain, pain across the board, a person who is able to take anti-inflammatory medicines, so this means somebody who doesn't have kidney problems, who doesn't have stomach problems, who doesn't have yet to be diagnosed problems with their esophagus like reflux disease or early ulcers or any of that, so we're establishing, or any other reason that they can't take anti-inflammatory medicines, can take ibuprofen, um, 400 milligrams, sometimes we'll even say 800 milligrams, together with, so that'd be two over-the-counter ibuprofen, together with two isostrate Tylenol, that'd be 1,000 milligrams of Tylenol. Those can be taken together without increasing the risk of either one of them to do them together. They're different medicines, different classes, different effects, different organs processing them uh, that could be hurt by them anyways. Take it with full glass of water, preferably with food also. That can be done once every eight hours for a total of up to 2,400 milligrams of ibuprofen in a day or 3,000 milligrams of Tylenol in a day. And that will take care of most pain that a person is going to experience that they would try to treat with over-the-counter medicines. Uh, you can also, if, if it's a migraine, migraine pain, if you don't have other contraindications to caffeine, like high blood pressure or, or heart rhythm disturbances or other things that make you not, have, not able to take caffeine, you could add 60 milligrams of caffeine to that. And what you're coming up with is something similar to taking two Excedrin. Um, caffeine seems to help with the migraine type pains. So let's get, oh, Billy Goat 126 is here. I, I love it when you show up because I like the picture of Napoleon. Teresa, weaned off opiates. Teresa D, congratulations. And Debbie Wonker, Worker, what is safe dose of Benadryl? Well, 25 milligrams is for most adults. Uh, for kids, I don't know what the dose is uh, per kilogram off the top of my head. I have FAP and my colon next week. Uh, what can I expect after surgery? They have to ask the surgeon that. I don't do that surgery. Boo Boo, what a heat patch help with the back pain? Possibly, yeah. Uh, we'll have people actually um, try heat, uh, alternate it with ice. For acute injuries, we usually start with ice. Again, you can alternate with heat. The truth is, uh, most back pain, the problem is so deep in, the temperature isn't actually making a difference for where the uh, pathology is located. Just, it makes people feel better, one or the other. Claire and Barney Dog, aspirin cream with lidocaine, 4% is good to rub on lower back. Beth Carmen, the fluffy bunny, uh, you need a prescription for that. How wide does the skin get red after itching it, or scratching it maybe for an inch? What causes it to get irritating? It has to do with chemicals chemicals that are released from cells like mast cells and basophils, white blood cells that release these chemicals that interact with nerve endings that we in our brain interpret as an itch sensation. Uh, and Diesel Darling, I love Thermacare patches. Boo Boo's coming on that. Teresa D, I like cold. See, yeah, we get that. We get people who have a strong preference, personal preference, from what helps for whatever it is that they're treating as far as heat or cold for low bag or some other type of pain. Claire's saying she can get 4% uh, topical lidocaine over the counter. Really? You can do that? Dr. Gwaine, do you know anything about 4% over the counter topical lidocaine? Calming whisper ASMR. Hi, doctor. I'm adopted, so I have no idea what health issues may be at risk for. Is there any way to find out? That's where one of those um, 23andMe or the Ancestry.com, I don't know if they really have medical stuff in the ancestry one might be considered. These things are being investigated right now to find out if they really are helpful. Uh, they're just in the earliest stages. I know from the ones I've evaluated with patients, I found them to not be helpful because it would say, okay, for this disease, you got a 23% risk of having it. And then there'll be another gene associated with that disease and it'll say, okay, now you have a 73% chance for this. Well, this, this gene said 23%, this one said 73% for the same disease. So stuff like that, it's a bunch of numbers that are uh, derived from large groups of people to apply them to an individual about will you or will you not get such and such disease. You know, unless, unless it's one of those things that everybody gets who has the gene, um, these tests really aren't that helpful. So for most of us, we're not going to get that much out of it. But if you have no knowledge of your family history apart from it, maybe, maybe it helped you a little bit to kind of know what your risks are. Disa Darlin says, I'm walking on the treadmill right now at this moment trying to get some of this weight off so maybe my back knees will stop hurting. I commend you, Diesel Darlin. But 
it's not the exercise that's going to really make the difference. Although it does burn some calories and weight loss is a function of calories out versus calories in. The calories in is really where it's at. Uh, not eating them in the first place. And that's hard for us to do. It's hard for me to do. Boo Boo Kitty, like some prenatal testing, is they still have statistics. Refuse to have any of them done. Um, I wouldn't refuse any of them. Uh, they can get some really good information and find some things that can be treated with uh, ultrasound, for example. Walk by faith. I'm Nicole. I'm a diabetic. I also have factor V Leiden and protein S deficiency, so I'm on Coumadin. That means that she would be inclined to have blood clots if she wasn't on these medicines because of these genetic um, genetically caused problems with these proteins in her blood that put her at the risk for the clots. Can't get a grip on my INR. That's how they test the how well the um, anticoagulation is working. If the INR is high, that means they don't clot. If it's low, they're more likely to clot, sometimes inappropriately for people like her. Uh, and it goes up and down all the time. Uh, vitamin K dependent blood clotting factors are what the Coumadin works on, or also called warfarin. It's a rat poison. Um, not used for rat poison so much anymore. They use more super warfarin for that. They, and the way it kills the rats is they bleed to death, obviously, because it's an anticoagulant. So instead of giving people rat dose, we give them doses determined by this blood test called the INR that has to be checked. For many people, it's checked monthly. For some of them, it's checked every six weeks. In our office, we, we tend to do it monthly if you're in the right range of anticoagulation. And if it goes up or down, well, then we have to adjust the dose. And it's always going up or down because people are taking in different amounts of vitamin K. Other medicines they take may affect how their liver processes it. It's a bit of a problem. So that's why I'm a fan of the novel anticoagulants that don't require any testing, and they work very consistently because they work a little differently. So vitamin K, where do we have that? Well, we have that in green leafy vegetables and other foods. And some people will say, oh, okay, then don't eat those. No, that's not right at all, because then if you stop eating them, and they set up your INR, and you do have some vitamin K in, in food, then it really has an effect on it, and your INR goes way down. It's better to be consistent. Try to eat the same amount of vitamin K-containing foods, and you'd have to Google what those foods are. I don't know off the top of my head. All right, so... Uh, calming whisper ASMR. Really, thank you for letting me know, Dr. Wayne. Oh, I guess you guys are having conversations while I'm talking. Hmm. Boo-boo, uh, boiled potatoes can be used to kill rats too because rats can't fart. You know, boo-boo, I don't know of any uh, confirmation of that I can share. Cheryl McNutt didn't know that, boo-boo. Beth Carmen, the fluffy bunny, boo-boo. Boo-boo, you, you're, like, you're like host number two or three, depending on if you count Dr. Wayne. Uh, Becky Wheeler, like Pradaxa? Yeah, that's one of them. Pradaxa's one of them. LMAO for boo-boo. <laughs> and Dr. Wayne, green leafy vegetables supply vitamin K. Yes, that is correct. And you, I'll, I'll let you research the potato fart or whatever it was that boo-boo was talking about. Rosa Gundes from Calexico. Hi, doctor. I've been having chest pain with pain in left arm and sometimes can breathe and my doctor order some blood tests, check, and prescribe me medicine, aspirin 325. Can something been wrong? It's possible, yes. Um, Beth Carmen, the YouTuber, by the way, don't know who that would be. Dude on the tube was prescribed Percocet for severe back spasms, but don't like taking it because afraid of getting addicted. It makes me sleepy. Any suggestions? Yeah, probably talk to your doctor about wood and some kind of a muscle relaxant be more appropriate for your situation. That could be. Uh, that might be just, just the ticket for you uh, rather than an opiate. Do I need to kill a rat in my attic? Are you hearing noises in your attic? I had a dry, cracked knuckles all my life. Tried everything. Any suggestions, Doc? Well, I, I, since you've already tried everything, there's nothing left, so I don't have anything to suggest. Boo -boo. My brother hung out at the dump with his friends and fed the rats and watched them explode. You must be talking about the potatoes again. Shaw McNutt saw a documentary on Netflix. Apparently, only a vegan diet is good for you. That's the only one. That's only only vegan diet's good for people. Um, actually, a vegan diet can be very bad because apparently you can live off of soda and Oreos and be vegan. So, no, uh, vegan, even vegans have to do things correctly to, to be healthy. Uh, Dr. Green was helping Sharon. Al Ian. Hi, doctor. I had gastric, 
gastric sleeve surgery, what's the best way to take B12? Well, if you don't absorb it um, because of your gastric surgery taking away some of your absorptive area of your gut, then that's probably going to have to be injection. But first, we like to try people on oral B12 because many people, uh, many people who don't have an absorption problem like you may, many people are able to get enough absorption of oral B12 even when they have a deficiency, uh, even when they have great problems absorbing it. So you would take like a thousand micrograms a day of vitamin B12 and then get the level checked. And then if it's just not working, you'll have to get the injections probably on a monthly basis. And it's actually the same amount in an IM shot as you would get daily with a thousand micrograms of oral um, vitamin B12. And I want to get aflacicodone and methadone, but doctor doesn't see seem to hear me. I'm so sorry. You want to get off those and you're having difficulty. Um, but of course, if you have somebody who's already prescribing it, you may have great difficulty, at least people would in our area, of finding someone new to prescribe it. So uh, I don't recommend just making a change until you're absolutely sure and, and keep asking for uh, uh, recommendations for how to wean off of it. First, Tuck 103, is there any vitamin deficiencies or underlying causes that could cause the dry knuckles? You would, um, vitamin E, vitamin A, and biotin would be the, uh, the cocktail that I would most be thinking of for skin related to vitamins and minerals. Um, and if they help, great. Um, not counting on it, but it certainly doesn't hurt to try it. Teresa, it took myself off fentanyl patches. It was not easy, I bet. How long after taking Accutane do you have to wait to consume alcohol? I believe if it's Accutane, it's just within a few days. I'd say three days would be probably a safe amount of time, but you need to check with whoever prescribed it because Accutane has very strict regulations on people who prescribe it. In fact, right now, I don't even have the kit in my office anymore for prescribing it, so I'm not... Not, uh, not the person to tell you because somebody else prescribed it to you. Uh, so you need to ask them. Boo Kitty, uh, steroids stain your skin? Yes, they can. It's supposed to cover the cream with plastic wrap. So I have. Uh, the plastic wrap does not make it less likely to stain. If anything, it would make it more because that makes it uh, equivalent to a higher potency steroid when you wrap the plastic wrap over the, the uh, steroid. That's a, a little trick that dermatologists will use to get less expensive steroid creams to work more potently so you don't have to pay for the higher potency. You know, they'll just take the lower potency stuff when it's not working, wrap the plastic wrap around it at night, leave it on, uh, do it only under a doctor's direction. Um, Google helps everything. 103, thanks, doc. You're welcome. And Teresa, thanks. Okay, good. Sally Ann, I also have mutant gene 0210A which makes my blood too clot. Coumadin does not work on me. Had two blockers. Have to take Xarelto. Good. Then you don't have to always get your blood tested like somebody on Coumadin would. Al Ian, thank you so much for your reply. Uh, Fair YouTube channel. Very, oh, well, thank you. I'm glad that you watched. Dude on the Tube 2000, what's the best way to get rid of gynecomast? Yeah, I definitely need it. Uh, either the um, Manzir or the Bro is what many people use. Actually, if, if there's not a hormone problem, uh, weight loss and there's no specific way to get weight loss he's talking about uh, men growing breasts no specific way to get weight loss to a specific body area it's all over body so you have to lose body weight all over by cutting down on calories of course uh, anytime people have gynecomastia we like to have them evaluated by a doctor to make sure that they don't have some kind of a problem with hormones being produced that shouldn't be uh, because that is a, a predominance of some female hormones that cause that and sometimes it's because there's a problem other times it's just because of you know some people produce it usually associated with uh, obesity uh, the the fat in the body they tend to have more of the female hormones uh, in men and tlanky or tanky that's new to me i haven't seen you here before welcome uh need to replace the syringe tomorrow scare okay well you're gonna get through it all right and uh, and then you'll be able to watch YouTube videos while you're laying there recovering. So kind of look forward to that part. Dr. Gwain, was that a Seinfeld reference? Yes, it was. Armida Verwise, yay, I made it. Hey, Ar Armida, we're glad to have you here. 
Beth Carmen Rose, the symptoms are face slouching and yellow eyes. Claire and Barney Dog, thank you for the nerve block. It really helps with the pain. Or are you telling if somebody asked for it? Uh, telling Tianki. Arminita. Arminita. Araminta. Sorry, I didn't uh, get close enough to read. Can finally say I'm no longer overweight. Woohoo! Congratulations. Good job, Melfos. Do residency programs follow any sort of hour restrictions? Yes, and they just increase the number of hours they allow them to make the residents work. Not a victory for medicine, not a victory for patients, not a victory for residents. Araminta Verwise. TPTA, 40 pounds total. Congratulations. Goldie Webb, what is the recovery time for perinicchia? Are there any after effects? Just a couple days, and you're almost fully recovered. Uh, as far as ongoing effects, if it, if it emptied nicely and the infection resolved because all the pus came out, uh, generally it just heals, the skin closes, and you won't have any more effects. Sometimes a really bad one will cause uh, some kind of damage to the nail growth and you can have a little deformity of the nail if it really damaged the nail bed. Dr. Gwing, can you read the blog while recovering a well? I don't know if you can read a blog while recovering a well, but I can tell everybody that they need to go to, if they haven't already signed up for it somehow, drgreennight.com, and you can get Dr. Gwing's blog, which talked about relationship today. And I think Dr. or I think Boo Boo Kitty already, like I'm calling her doctor because she gives so much advice on this thing. Rosa, in my case, uh, you were responding to somebody else. Sally Ann, I missed your my question. Never heard the psycho part of fibro. I read everything I could find. Where is this info found? Um, in your neurologist's office and in his textbooks. Boo Boo Kitty, you should blog more often, Dr. Gwain. MRI versus MRI? Depends on what you're looking for. Jill Fisher, biceps tendon repair Thursday. I had full replacement of my right shoulder three months ago. Super scared. I'm sorry. But you'll, you'll, you'll be fine. Arminita, the DVT is usual after a stay in the hospital. They happen very often. That's why everybody's put on these injections to keep them from having blood clots. Now it's standard uh, in the hospitals when people are hospitalized, for that, especially for orthopedic surgery. Dude on the tube 2000, I need to lose weight. I'm working on it. Thanks, Doc. Petra. Oh, Petra. Hi. Welcome. Good to have you here. Gwen, uh, I would blog more, but some patients, somebody has to see the patients. Yes. Somebody is on YouTube a lot, and so he has to see the patients. Aramita, dude on the tube, I'll keep my thoughts up. Yes, do that. And Boo Boo saw that Petra was here. Mofros, uh, how does some become a medical scribe? Uh, you find a doctor who needs one, and you say, I'll do it, or look in the one ads for a scribe. Uh, oftentimes, they look for pre-medical students for doing scribe. That seems to be a good uh, oftentimes, medical assistants will kind of fall into it. We've actually experimented with having our medical assistants be our scribes. You're amazing. Don't know who you're talking to, but thank you if it was me. Beth Carmen, uh, could I have insomnia? You could. If I spend all night on my device, even without my device, it takes 30 minutes an hour. I know I already asked this question, but typing, you said anything about it. Spend all night on my device. Could I have insomnia? If I spend... It could cause it. Yeah, things that you do when you're supposed to be sleeping your body gets used to when you're in wherever that is, not sleeping. So if you're on your device when you're in bed at night and you try to be in bed at night at other times and you used to be awake, then your body is going to think that you need to be awake. It kind of gets into these cycles, follows patterns that you set up for it. Who was talking to Dr. Quain about somebody? Uh, Goldie Webb, drink plenty of water for calorie intake, dude on the tube. Are you uploading more earwax removal vids? as soon as they come in. Sharon t saying hi to Petra. Tuck 103, where would I get clotting powder that helps use on the mind's temple? Uh, Amazon, although you don't want to use it if you're not numb. Diesel Darlin, love the earwax removal. Yeah. How are you doing, Petra? Wait, I'm going to change to my iPad. <laughs> okay. Araminta, earwax videos are the best. Jill, is red light therapy a good thing for someone with fibro? I don't know of any evidence for that. Of course, I haven't read everything that there is to read. Teresa D. was a transcriptionist for years, certified. That's yeah, Actually, transcriptionists should probably be the people becoming um, scribes because they've got all the skills and the medical terminology and they can type fast what they're hearing. So uh, transcriptionist training would be excellent for somebody who wants to be a scribe. Armita, uh, infrared light's good for acne. Uh, what lights do they use for the acne? Actually, I can't help you with that one. Sorry. Milfo7, 
I'm pre-med, looking for ways to boost my application. I'll be a freshman in college next year. Just grab the radio. Do you ever have difficulty remembering names of diseases? Yeah, I do. And names of medicines. You see it on this show. On the live show, I'm always forgetting stuff and not able to come up with it. There are so many out there. I'm wondering how. Nah, I don't remember all. Other doctors might. I don't. Uh, okay, thanks. Friends of being nocturnal. <laughs> dude on the tube. Thanks for the prayers. You bet, dude on the tube. Beth Carmen, can I say puns in the chat? <laughs> thanks. I'm looking for up puns. Cheryl, they are, dude. Petra, so now I'm back. I have to talk text now, put me out of a job. And Clara Barney Dog talks about the blue lights. And Aramita, uh, off to bed, friends. Oh, yeah, Aramita, thanks for being a part of this. Boo Boo, Dr. Vaughn, your videos and chats are so awesome. I feel like being part of your friendly group here. And you add a special thing to it, Boo Boo. We're glad to have you be a part of it. So thank you so much, guys. I also want to point out, uh, those of you that aren't on Patreon, you can go to, Auburn Med or to patreon.com slash Auburn Medical Group because we have videos there. Somebody who's watched the videos, tell us what you think about Petra or Boo Boo. You've seen like that one I put out today. So there are videos there that you don't get on the YouTube channel. They're just for behind the scenes stuff, um, extra content that people who like more than just what's on the channel, they can get a hold of that by being there. Uh, do you feel the most challenging part of medical school? Uh, it was it was being on call and in the hospital and having mean people be your supervisor. Uh, Jill says thanks and okay. What else do you think about shadowing for a very surgical experience when you want to be a human human physician? Uh, oh, shadowing a vet. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of similarities. So vet experience would would give you an idea of some of the issues that are. Uh, going on in some of the science and some of the physiology. It's not one-to-one, -one, but yeah, yeah, it'd be helpful. So thank you so much, guys, for doing this. I'm going to wrap it up. Um, thank you. This was a great session. I'm surprised at how long it kept going. Boy, I, I, and I hardly got to all the comments. You guys had so many of them. I sure appreciate that. Until next time, Dr. Mark Vaughn telling all of you to stay in good health.